Hi there. Do you know, it's hard to believe that it has been just over a year since we launched the Simon King Wildlife website. And I'd just like to take this opportunity to quickly thank those who have supported us in that time, particularly Zeiss, Bushnell and Manfrotto. Thank you so much for your help over the past 12 months or so. Now, we're going to come to all of the updates that have taken place here at Wild Meadows in just a moment. But first of all, back in May, uh, we used our Bushnell trail cams to stake out uh, what we thought might be a fox earth at a location in Dorset. The results, very exciting indeed, because we put out three different trail cams and each of them recorded evidence of young cubs at the site. That gave us the confidence to set up a hide nearby and do a bit of filming. And Sam got these gorgeous shots of the whole family in broad daylight. All that in a haze of bluebells, absolutely magical scenes. You see, that's the beauty of using these Bushnell trail cams to identify where an animal is moving, perhaps which hole it's using in the case of the foxes. It takes the guesswork out of the next stage if you want to do any further photography or filmmaking, but they're, they're excellent in their own right in terms of recording not just evidence, but some, some cracking shots. Now on to what's been going on over the past month or so here at Wild Meadows, and a lot has been going on. Life and death struggles. There have been winners, and there have been losers. And among the losers, I'm sorry to say, was a beautiful little robin family that we were following. We charted the progress of the female who was incubating the eggs, right up to the point of hatching, and starting to feed the funny little chicks. Though the nest was really well hidden in an ivy-covered tree, the sharp eyes of a magpie spotted it, and it was all over in the blink of an eye. There were other losers, sadly among them our Kestrel family. Alarm bells started to ring when, during incubation, they went over the due hatching date. One day, two days, three days. After a week, we felt pretty confident that the eggs must have been infertile. I fully expected the female to abandon incubation about eight or ten days after the due hatch date, but she really stuck with it, which I think further illustrates her inexperience. I'm pretty confident this is a young female, her first clutch, and sadly destined to do. Eventually, after almost three weeks of extended incubation beyond the hatch date, she abandoned. Of course, nothing is wasted in nature. Hours after the eggs were exposed, a jackdaw hopped into the nest box to make the most of an easy meal. You've got to wonder just how tasty the eggs were. I imagine they were pretty stinky. Even though they've abandoned their nest, the kestrel pair are still hanging around wild meadows. I hear them and see them almost every day. And so I have really high hopes that next year they'll have better luck. They weren't all losers, though. We had great success stories. We followed a blackbird family that was nesting in one of the hedges here, and they managed to fledge three chicks without a problem at all. Hardly surprising, because they were surrounded by a fortress of a blackthorn bush. You've got to put that down to experience, surely. And our great spotted woodpecker pair as well managed to fledge two chicks. Right up until the point they fledged, we didn't know how many young were in the nest. Only when they popped out could we do a head count. And as well as the wren nest that we featured in the last episode, we've been following another wren nest a little bit further away, and they've been doing really well, fledging four chicks successfully. Elsewhere, our live camera has been charting all the movements of our local badger community, the mother, the two cubs, the adult male, and a, a couple of others. The mother, especially, is a really regular visitor to the feeding station, but on this occasion, her menu 
was a little varied. Do you know, I have never seen a badger attacking a frog and successfully catching and eating it. I'm not sure that anybody has, and this is quite probably the first time it has ever been filmed. I find it remarkable just how agile and alert a badger can be when it puts its mind to it. Now, you may remember we've been working out how best to offer fish bits to our local otter community that use the river here. And um, to be honest, we were failing. Every time we put bits of fish out, the rats would come and take them before the otters arrived. But we finally nailed it. We put a stone basin into the beach where the otters regularly visit, filled that with water, and then put the fish bits in there. The rats don't like to dive for a meal. The otters, of course, are well adapted to finding a snack underwater. But now they're showing up regularly on the live cam and hanging around for good periods of time. Great views, including this very enthusiastic cub who really gets into his meal. Now I have to tell you, I have been so chuffed with the amount of life that's been pouring into the new lake that we dug only last autumn. There have been lots of bugs and most exciting of all for me is huge numbers of dragonflies and damselflies, lots of different species, including emperors. These are truly magnificent insects hawking around, catching live prey on the wing, the females laying their eggs in the stems of water plants, and the males fighting over the airspace for the rights to mate. And as well as dragonflies, the lake has been regularly visited by another jewel, a kingfisher. I spent a little bit of time filming and photographing this young female and we have a camera being tested as I speak, seeing if it's going to make a suitable contender for our network of live cameras. And things are looking good. Keep an eye on the website for updates. Now, in addition to watching the kingfisher feeding, I also have an ambition to try and encourage them to nest on the lake. Now, we did build a nest bank uh, right at the beginning of the lake's creation, but unfortunately the ground was unstable, it started to collapse. So we have recently been spending time creating what I think has got to be one of the biggest and most elaborate nest boxes in the business. A cement block wall in it, one small hole which leads to a tunnel and a chamber. And of course in the chamber there is a camera. Now we won't know if that kingfisher nest box, if you can call it that, has been successful until spring of next year. But I have my fingers and just about everything else crossed that it might. That's all we have time for in this episode of Wild Meadows. We are working on lots of new exciting projects, which I'll uh, tell you about next time I see you. Bye for now. <laughs>